People are understandably unsettled given the media attention the coronavirus outbreak is getting, but we wanted to find out whether people are right to be concerned or should just go on with life without stressing out too much. We are going to dig deeper by talking to an expert in the field of viruses. I'm happy to say I'm joined on Skype by Dr. Mohamed Munir, lecturer in biomedicine at Lancaster University in the UK. Thanks for joining us, uh, Doctor. Pleasure. So as per what is being reported by China and other countries, there have now been around 42,000 confirmed coronavirus cases. We've been told a lot about how contagious this virus is, but considering it's been around six weeks since China reported its first case, why are there so few cases, relatively speaking, and why in this interconnected world is Hubei province much more affected than any other region? So this uh, virus is, was started in Wuhan um, at the end of uh, uh, um, December 2019. And then within three weeks, uh, all the efforts were made, uh, such as containment and locking down of the Wuhan and adjacent areas. So any person who traveled before uh, the locking down has been the main source of the transmission of the virus to other countries which means that after these containment uh, were uh, imposed in uh, Hubei province, then the number of cases that were reported abroad were significantly reduced. And also because of the awareness, overall preparation abroad in the Europe, especially as I can speak on, they, the preparation was significantly higher. So all the major uh, entry ports were well prepared so they were in the position to identify the cases and then therefore the containment was possible to isolate them and to monitor the infection. However, the major uh, emphasis at, at the moment has really been that the China is putting a lot of efforts to contain the virus within that province. Okay, Doctor, um, in South Korea, you drive around the city and you see people wearing face masks all the time due to the fine dust pollution, but there's seriously been an uptick in the number of people you see wearing uh, face masks around the city. If our viewers are concerned about the coronavirus affecting them or their family, is a protective face mask really going to make that much of a difference? Because reports say that the virus can actually live on your hands for an extended period anyway. And of course, we touch our mouths all the time without even thinking. Uh, that is absolutely right. The studies uh, on the safety of the mask in preventing infectious diseases largely remain inconclusive, mainly because most of the studies using uh, mask on to the prevention of the spread of the infection has been on a, on a laboratory condition or in an experimental procedure. Therefore, the value of using mask is not as significant as people uh, normally think. However, given the situation of endemicity of the infection in a given region, the recommendation um, based on the scientific evidences is that the person who is infected with the virus, if they wear a mask, the chances to spread to other people would significantly be lower. However, the person who is not infected, if they wear it, then the chances to contract the infection would not be significantly altered. While uh, saying that one, I would personally recommend that having something on is better than nothing. However, that is not an ultimate solution to stop the infection from one person to another person. Okay, great advice there. And now experts are still searching for the origin of the outbreak. We are bombed bombarded daily with reports and different theories. This torrent of information from left and right confuses us lay people. Uh, having studied the genetic makeup of the coronavirus yourself, how do you think this virus actually started? Well, it's, uh, at this uh, stage, it's um, uh, impossible to predict anything. Uh, on the, the origin of this uh, uh, coronavirus, we now call it uh, COVID-19, mainly because uh, if we look onto the genetic makeup, it is very closely related to the viruses. Those were originated from bats, and this virus has a potential to infect bat cell culture, which is a laboratory version of seeing if the virus has infectivity or not. And there are possibilities that this would have come from any other animal because bats themselves are not 
able to transmit the virus directly to the human. It has to go into an in intermediate host and then it is transmitted to the to the human. Whatsoever the reason, if there are two important points to consider at this moment, is that we are not seeing a continuous uh, emergence or the in introduction of the virus from the animal, whatsoever that animal has been. Because all the viruses we are seeing now, they are almost identical. There is no a continuous uh, uh, transmission of the virus from that animal X. But whatsoever that animal would be, at this moment, that is not important. Importance is to contain the infection as it stands. But one thing is very clear that these viruses historically are originated from bats directly or indirectly. So there are fair chances it would have originated from bats. But as it stands now, the information is in inconclusive to really uh, dictate anything. Okay, so the working theory is that this originated in bats, but we don't entirely know for sure quite now is what you're saying. That is absolutely right. But it, it, it has to come through uh, the animal. So that is for sure that these viruses have come from animals, but which direct animal it has been, it's inconclusive. So we have strong evidences that it came from bats. However, we required uh, retrospective studies where we will take the virus, we will be able to infect the bats and see how long it can sustain over there. And if that virus would be adopted there and that adoptive virus can come back to human, until those studies are performed, it remain uh, um, a, a, a mystery. But again, I would like to emphasize that at this moment, importance is not where from it has come. Importance is that how can we contain this infection as it stands so that it stop further spread. Yes, absolutely. And uh, my final question for you, doctor, is the uh, mortality rate because the coronavirus mortality rate is low compared to SARS, MERS and other viruses we've seen in the past. We've had 28 confirmed cases in South Korea, no deaths and all the patients are either in stable condition or have uh, recovered. Why outside of Hubei province is the mortality rate so low and how likely is it at all that this virus mutates and the ratio of deaths per cases suddenly jumps rapidly? This is a very important question, Mark. There are a few things that need to be understood before we make a conclusion. The first thing is that when virus pass on from one person to another person, we call it, it has completed one generation. And as it moves from one person to another person, another person to the third person, it carry on generating more and more generations. More generations are made, the virus acquires some mutations that make it fitter and make it possible to have a, a, a higher transmission between people. So if we look on to the genetic makeup of this virus, the one that was first isolated and the one that uh, was isolated after six weeks, there are relatively less uh, chances of this virus that acquire mutation. Because of this less mutation we are seeing, this virus has become more um, uh, infective, if I may say so. So it can transmit from one person to another person more effectively. However, it did not get that potential as that of SARS or MERS to kill the people. So we have also noticed that because the virus required a living host to live on, more it is killing, short-lived the virus would be. It is in contrast to other pathogens which do not require a living host, for example, bacteria. Viruses need a living host to live on. So therefore, we are seeing that the virus that have a high transmission potential will be less lethal to kill the host. And within um, Huan uh, and, and also Hubei province, the overall mortality rate, whatever we are seeing is in there. And that has mainly been attributed to the people who are having underlying causes or they are in the later um, age. And that is probably the reason the overall number is higher. People in, uh, in overseas accept two mortalities, no much uh, deaths have been reported. And that is mainly because people who are traveling, they are at a younger age, so they are coping the infection relatively better than the people who are having underlying causes. Okay, wonderful, Doctor. Uh, I think we learned a lot uh, from your insights and we appreciate them. That was Dr. Mohamed Munir, lecturer 
in biomedicine at Lancaster University in the UK. Thank you ever so much for staying up late and joining us. Like this it is